Good to see you. Hey, good to see you too. How are you? Yeah, doing okay. Uh, just getting things set up here. At, um, the uh, the chat isn't working, so I think if people want to say something, probably uh, there, there should be few enough. I think you can just unmute your mic and, and talk if it gets to be a problem. Uh, we can we can work on uh, something else. Uh, I guess if we have presentations going on, probably good to jump in the queue. That can just be a, a note to us that there's there's someone there. But, uh, but since the chat's not working, um, don't be shy about just uh, jumping in to say something. I think maybe we'll give it a, a few more minutes, let others join. Feels strange to me taking having a meet echo session uh, at home. I, it became the norm during COVID, but I don't think I've done it since uh, we started meeting in person. So this kind of feels like uh, going back in time to me. Uh, a time that I, I don't really have the greatest memories of. <laughs> And uh, we basically have two things on the agenda for today. Um, we have a, a set of slides that just cover overall IETF through GPP coordination that Lionel will go through. And uh, then we have a contribution from uh, John about a draft uh, uh, that he and others are, have uh, worked on and submitted. And I believe it's on the agenda for um, uh, this IETF meeting in uh, TSWG, uh, TSVWG. And, uh, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, the goal is to have some extra time though for just uh, people to raise up, to, to raise things. The, and I should just start by saying, uh, you know, the whole kind of point of having this call is to help us identify any kind of, you know, things, ho hopefully not a bunch of problems, hopefully more like things that are going well, but, but just to talk about how things are going in general between IETF 3GPP. And rather than wait until the meeting and then kind of at that point in time, start pulling people around and, and saying, hey, you know, this might be something we need to look into, to have a little bit of advance notice and to share that with a broader set of people who, who may not be able to join us at the IETF meeting. So uh, that's really what this is for, is, is to share information and also help us prep for things that we might want to dig into in more detail at the actual IETF meeting um, when we meet there. And, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, so uh, I don't know, just any questions on that overall approach? Because I think having this meeting is a little bit new to us, but then again, I'm a little bit new to this role too. So uh, any questions on that before we kind of jump in? Okay, uh, great. Then. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up the slides here. And let's see, I think I need to remember how to do this. I think there's a way for me to pass control to you, Lionel, but uh, yeah, uh, you should you should see like uh, something saying control has been passed to you. And you can actually- Yes. Let me, yeah, I can. Okay, great. First of all, so thank you. Um, uh, will you uh, Charles, will you copy it as a um, at least? Your audio is not good right now. I don't know. If oh, okay. It's not uh, let me check. No, I'm not driving. <laughs> I'm in the office. Uh, uh, let me check what is. The video is coming through nice and clear. It's just something with the audio as well. Not good. Uh, 
I think that my mic is not working, so. Well, it sounds a little better now. It, it's just when you. Uh, it, it's better like this? Uh, no, no don't, don't keep it too close. It actually sounds like it's, uh, it's almost like a little too loud or, or like you're okay. too loud. Okay. And, and right now? I don't know how, how it sounds for others. I mean, I can, I can hear you. I can make out what you're saying. It's just, uh, it's a little garbled. General, do you by any chance have uh, any, anything like a microphone or a headset or something you could use? I know that's something that Echo recommends. I have one, but I'm not so sure that uh, is the one used by the, uh, uh, is the one used by the Teco. Uh, I will check how to change it. I don't know how to configure it. If anything, the uh, the microphone being a little bit further away from you might be a little better. It's hard to tell though. Uh, no, it's not great. Audio, you go to the tools button at the top right of your screen, second to the right. Yeah. And there you can say change devices and you get a device selection. Okay, maybe that's... Uh... And you, your microphone is totally overdriven. It's it's clipping madly. That's why we can't understand. Is it, is it better like this? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's not well, much better. It's still totally clipping. You have to reduce the gain on that microphone. Uh, uh, yeah, and I don't know how to do that. Let's see. Do you happen to have another headset available or, or some other uh, microphone? Maybe there's one built into your uh, laptop or... Uh, um, Hello. Uh, for, for, for me, the microphone is good uh, here. So, yeah, it's. Uh, let's see. No, I can't. Is there any. Um, is it better now? I think, if anything, you need to talk very softly. <laughs> Uh, uh, is it better now? Not much. So if you look at your video screen on the top left, you see an audio representation, and that uh, appears to be hitting the, the roof all the time. And you need to yeah. turn down the, the game. You hear me? You there? Yeah, that's better. Hello? Can you hear us? Because you, you? You, you sound, yeah, you sound better. Uh, you, you, you can. Yeah. Do you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you speak if I can hear you? <laughs> At least much more clearer now, you know. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? I can't hear you, so... Uh... Hmm. Your, your audio is... We can hear you fine, but I guess that doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So... Me, 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 me. I, can, uh, I can run through the slides and you could... Oh. 
Can you hear us now? Lionel? Yeah, we don't hear you. Uh, I, we heard you okay. If you could hear us again now. And unfortunately, the chat's well, not Shams, working. So. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I think uh, maybe I'll just have to present the slides. And uh, if Lionel manages to uh, get back on, uh, he can jump in and uh, correct or, or add more things as we go along. Um, so I'll have to take control back of the slides. Uh, sorry about this, everyone. Okay, so so here's the overall agenda that we plan to go through. And Lionel, if, if you're able to hear and feel free to jump in at any time. But uh, uh, first of all, just you know, a little bit of a roundtable that was sharing what, what the overall plan was here. And then uh, we'll go through the some uh, you know what's been going on between 3GPP and IETF and the coordination that's been happening there. This is actually based on a set of slides that Lionel put together and uh, presented at the uh, the last essay plenary meeting to inform everyone at 3GPP kind of what's going on between 3GPP and IETF. Uh, we'll talk about the liaison statements that we have out, um, uh, what's going on with IANA because there were some issues with that before and, and some good work to try to get that on track. Um, then we'll talk about uh, the status of some dependencies between really dependencies that 3GPP specifications have on IETF documents. Then just uh, for information, there'll be a sharing of the uh, the, the plans for uh, upcoming 3GPP releases, where we are with release uh, 18, plans for 19, and, and some very early discussion and thought around uh, 20. And then uh, we'll open it up for, for other business, which will start with the presentation that John put together. So jumping into the coordination, um, let's see, this first part I don't need to tell people here about so much. It was just informing people at the 3GPP meeting what happened at our last IETF meeting and how we met in Yokohama and that we had a session much like this where we pulled people together within the IETF community to discuss you know, interactions with 3GPP and then to inform them of the next uh, meeting. Feel free to jump in at any time if you have a question uh, or, or, or want to uh, add something. Yeah, go ahead, Magnus. Yes, about the transcending procedures towards 3D people from ITF. I mean, from a shares perspective, et cetera, the roles, I mean, it's what's the expectation here? Is it still that you fill in the form and you attach a format the document with the actual text as a condition? Because the tool sends to to the 3 dpp license, but it's the issue was, I guess, before. Have this been straightened out anymore? Okay. Yeah, I think we. Uh, I don't know if we had a, a, a slide on that. I think that's something we need to talk about um, mm -hmm. because uh, I, I'm just learning a bit how that that tool works um, in terms of uh, both, you know, receiving. Um, liaison statements from 3GPP and how to share that then with the IETF community and, and like get it posted. And then the other way around how to interact. And I think it's best at this point in time, if, uh, if the chairs uh, just keep me involved whenever, if they have something they want to send to 3GPP and then, you know, we can work, I, I can work together, Lionel as well with um, the folks in 3GPP who will be on the receiving end of that just to make sure that that everything goes through and that it's in a format that they know how to use. And because I I think there's a there's some manual 
uh, process. And there's also some sort of automated tools that make it look a bit more automated than maybe it is, or that automate some parts, but you need to know that there's still a little bit of manual work there to get things to go correctly. And some assumptions as to what information is shared in the format. And, uh, and I think we do have a slide on that later on that Lionel put together. Um, so I think we can talk about that a little bit more on this call, but that was actually one of the, the big things I wanted to work on at the next, at this upcoming IHF meeting and try to figure out both understand how our tools are working and, uh, and then see where, you know, come up with like a, uh, maybe a written down procedure uh, of how to go about handling these liaisons and then maybe do something in the working group chair session, informing people, okay, here's what we're going to do going forward. But I don't know at this point exactly what that is. Yeah, I guess, and that also needs coordination with the other, uh, other liaisons manager to other groups because yes. how, how to take the different. Yeah, because unfortunately each organization has a different way that they deal with uh, liaisons and some are more rigid in how they do it than others. Um, so the GPP, uh, as, you, as you know, I think we all know now, they, they expect a contribution to be submitted uh, in the form of a Word document that's formatted a specific way, uh, uh, just like other meeting contributions that come into the 3GPP meeting. That's the way a liaison uh, goes into 3GPP, and then 3GPP responds with uh, a formal uh, response back which appears very similar, but it's directed to uh, IETF. And then we end up receiving that uh, 3GPP document. Yeah, I think Peter speaking here, I think the point is during this, uh, the IETF, the line statement guy, woman from uh, CGP, if she receives an email, she always looks into the attachment and assumes that the uh, line statement is in the attachment. And if you have sent just an email without any attachments, then she does not know what to do with this one. Then she do not. Then she has no idea what is the content. And if this is just a draft or something like this, so they expect then usually an email with some indication what is in the attachment, and the attachment contains then this uh, con this information from ITF. And if this attachment is not there, then she does not know what to do. And then sometimes I, uh, these live statements are getting lost. So, so that's why I think it's probably best at this point that you have some, uh, you know, to, like in the case, uh, for example, Magnus, if you have a, uh, a liaison you want to send to 3 uh you can reach out to me. I'll work uh, with you and with uh, Suzanne and the uh, 3GPP, make sure that everyone's kind of doing and getting what they need and, and that's clear what's supposed to happen with this, uh, with the liaison statement. And like, if we just do that while we figure out, okay, where are there gaps in the tooling or where are there specific things in the tooling that need to be highlighted so everyone knows, you know, that's an important aspect. And where are there, say, 3GPP specific things that maybe we're, we're not going to handle in tooling, like what Peter uh, just said, and maybe we need to write up some text about how that works. Uh, yep. So I'm not quite sure what the solution is, but I think uh, getting away from relying too much on the tooling for right now, use the tooling, but but make sure that we have a, just an email, you know, chain about each of these so that we can make sure that tooling's working as expected and the liaisons being handled as expected. Yeah. Yeah, maybe because one simple I, thing could be that we, if you have these kind of live statement and you have just an email, then Charles and I we could sit together and put out of this uh, in this email a final document and send it to the live statement coordinator of yeah. CGP, and then it's clear. Yeah. But I guess in this case, we the next one I expect now is with the we can ensure that we we are creating a attachment for the yes. tool and then so that hopefully works and then you can verify that it's been reaching yeah. and yeah. it's sent so including you too okay uh let's see and what did i skip over here i think uh let me just go back um 
So at the last meeting, what we did, we created this and uh, a new group under the IAB. So within the data tracker, we now have a, a group uh, for IETF and uh, 3GPP coordination. And we borrowed uh, a bit from the IETF IEEE IAB group uh, since they had some, some procedures that seemed to be working pretty well for coordinating between IETF and, and IEEE. So uh, part of what we borrowed from that was this idea of having a, a prep call a couple weeks before an IETF meeting to, uh, to identify um, things that, that uh, we may need to talk about in more detail at, at the upcoming IETF meeting. So uh, now we can use that as a space for sharing information, but also tracking things like this in our meeting. So, uh, so I think that'll be a handy thing for us to have. Uh, also, just like with uh, regular working groups, it's an easy way to you know, see what the, um, the, the mailer is for, for this group and uh, those types of things. So it just gives us a, a home within the data tracker. Any questions about that? Oh, and uh, this actually reminds me, another thing I think that was talked about the last IETF meeting was um, updating RFC uh, 3113. And I think that would probably make a lot of sense to do um, you know, sometime within this next year uh, and probably including some verbiage about how we deal with liaisons, which has uh, been updated. Uh, the other big thing is the dependency tracking tool. And we'll talk about the dependencies that we're aware of, but uh, that's kind of a manual process that, uh, that fortunately Lionel's pretty uh, savvy with handling and identifying these uh, liaisons. And then, uh, but, but the tooling that we have in place that basically used to scan all three GPP documents and look for references to IETF drafts and, and flag those and highlight them for us. Uh, that's not working anymore. So we either need to figure out how to update that tool or create some new tooling. And uh, so that's something for discussion, both within IETF and 3GPP, and maybe something where the IETF tools team, uh, Karsten, I know you work a lot with that group. Maybe there's something we can do on the IETF side to help with this as well. Okay, so we have our uh, uh, the email list. Oh, this is a new email list that got created. This is for um, discussions specifically on uh, uh, satellite uh, and the networking side of things as they relate to satellite technology. And I think the important thing here is that it's for people who are you know working across IETF and through GPP. Let's provide a place to have some discussions about the touch points between the two, but but not dig into or duplicate or maybe go be in conflict with any of the discussions that should be happening in 3GPP, right? So this work is still being done in 3GPP, but just when there's some kind of overlap or touch points with IETF, those are the things we want to be able to talk about here and, and highlight those and, and have a group where we, we have the ability to coordinate on those. Um, so hopefully it's clear what that uh, 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 new mailing list is for and, uh, and we can use it and it'll be helpful as opposed to causing any problems. Okay, liaison statements. We talked about this a little bit. For this one, I believe it's only uh, things, liaisons from 3GPP coming back to IETF at this point. And this one was on the um, liaison statement that, that you had sent previously, uh, Magnus, to SA3, telling them about uh, the work on S, uh, CTP and some of the vulnerabilities uh, that had been discovered you know, within the IETF with uh, the protocols there and, and the approach that was being taken and then a, kind of a new approach that, that uh, the working group is looking at. And SA3 was uh, you know, thankful that that information had been provided uh, thought that the, what was being proposed made sense and just basically want that work to be done, you know, yesterday. <laughs> so, so they just want to be kept in the loop um, as, as, uh, as the ITF working group comes up with a solution for this that they can use. Yeah, go ahead, Magnus. Yeah, 
Uh, yes, I mean that's that's a good summary, and I have also kind of a bit more informal and, and trying to reach out and post it actually to both SA three and round three around that they actually need some three D PP. Uh, the three D PP member companies to actually maybe have their participants in ITF to actually mm. participate in this issue, and and I hope that we'll see a little bit feedback from them because this is directly impacting what they're going to implement. We require. Yeah, yeah, yeah good point. Um, <laughs> we certainly see that within three GPP as well. That uh, there'll be that reminder that hey, if you want to get something done in three GPP, the best way to do it is you know, participate in 3GPP and send a contribution. And um, so similarly, make it clear that, that they're welcome and it would be appreciated to have that type of input. Even if it doesn't need to be at the IETF meeting, it can be just, you know, uh, participating on a, uh, the mailing list and that type of thing, reviewing the drafts. So yeah, to highlight that uh, would be good that that would help speed up the work. Then the other one here, this is, uh, I believe this was to NetMod, and it was about um, within Yang models that uh, uh, mechanisms needed for handling these concepts, which in 3GPP have been termed as uh, is invariant and also a system created. Uh, this just results in some, uh, you know, the, within 3GPP, they, they've seen a need to have some way of identifying this to uh, uh, within the Yang models to say that, yeah, you have these this configuration information, which typically would be read-write, but if it's created by the system or if it has this tag and is invariant, that perhaps it gets set and then you can't change it um, and to make that clear. So there's a, um, a draft that's just a, a um, individual draft at this point. It's being discussed within the NetMod working group and trying to find something where it fits nicely. I think IETF is trying to find some a way where it fits nicely into the way Yang works, and it still meets the needs of 3GPP. And uh, although that might not be doing exactly what 3GPP is doing right now, so it's to try to find that happy medium where, where it, it, the, the new solution works for 3GPP and doesn't, uh, I don't know, uh, negatively impact the way Yang works. So this is still being actively discussed in that mod. Okay, no liaisons from uh, IETF to 3GPP, but it sounds like uh, Magnus, maybe there'll be one coming soon. And just keep me in the loop on that and we'll make sure the right things happen. Uh, I don't know if I can speak, is it good yeah. enough? Yeah, you sound perfect now. <laughs> Okay, um, so, but I would say that it's a general um, uh, guideline that we should provide to 3GPP guys saying that if they want to see something um, moving forward within ITF, uh, they need to be involved uh, uh, in ITF. So as you said, not uh, maybe not uh, at the ITF meeting, if it might not be needed, but at least to be active on the mailing list. And I yeah. think it's a general uh, feedback that we should uh, again and again provide to 3GPP guys because time to time, uh, especially when you have uh, new delegates, uh, they, they forgot about this. They see IHF just as a front office when you can push some requirements and they will work on this requirement and provide the feedback to 3GPP. I would say that the same apply for ITF guys. So I think it's where we need to have a uh, some uh, clear guidelines providing to both uh, organizations to ensure that when something is requested uh, from a specific uh, SDO, we have also people involved in this SDO to be able to to uh, to, to to move forward any topic because it is uh, especially within 3GPP and ITF it is a, a contribution uh, driven or comment driven so it's something that we need to 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 remind uh, time to time to the delegates in those groups. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And is there a better way to do that? I know uh, uh, mentioning that in the SA plenary is a good way to do it, but uh, is there a better way to do that across the, the various SA groups? Or do you think we should have something to uh, quick uh, talk with the chairs and like an SA1, SA2, SA, like each SA subgroup to, uh, to have that point made? Would that be worthwhile? Yeah. And also in the CT groups uh, and 
Yeah, it's something that we can remind to at the next uh, TSG plenaries, and and if there is even a need for um, a specific LS to all the groups to to remind this, it would be it would be okay, I think. Okay. Okay. Now the uh, the tracking of IANA. Uh, assignments. Um, actually, uh, Lionel, it seems like you're, if you want to take over, because especially this topic, I, I know you have much better knowledge of what's going on here than I do. Uh, uh, and if, the if, if, that, if the that, sound uh, is okay for everyone, it's fine. Yeah, it I can is. go on. Okay. So this one is just for information because we had a cross uh, discussion on this topic and uh, we had an issue um, with the uh, late specification. Uh, from uh, top of the uh, Swiss GPP specification, where a lot of uh, INI assignments were not requested or requested, but uh, we had no clue on. Uh, uh, so, from a coordination point of view internally in Swiss GPP, we had no clue about uh, what would be the output of this request. Uh, so, what we have decided it's now, uh, so for uh, two years, I think, we have a centralized uh, management of any request sent to INI for assignments. And uh, we have also a specific uh, action point for the reporters to review all the specification, to collect uh, all the uh, requirement for INI assignment, and to send it to uh, to the uh, uh, ITF liaison. So in that sense, we are uh, able to track any need for INI assignment, and we have also created a, a specific uh, registry uh, within S3GPP uh, to list uh, all the um, uh, pending INI requests. So, um, so it's a, a practical way for us to ensure that uh, uh, the work is done, is well done, and uh, and to monitor uh, to monitor the output of uh, any assignment request. And for the second part, is that uh, you know that we had a long discussion regarding the uh, the port number assignment request coming from 3GPP, especially for uh, internet interfaces. And uh, so we had um, a key issue on that. And what we have uh, defined uh, within 3GPP is alternative to INI port assignment. So it was documented in a specific uh, technical report, 29941. Uh, and uh, one of the solutions provided uh, in this report was to rely on, uh, on uh, dynamic uh, ports uh, to be able to, uh, let's say, locally assigned uh, a, um, uh, a private port to a given a 3GPP interface. So it's purely internal to 3GPP. Uh, obviously, if you cross, uh, if you have uh, inter-domain uh, interfaces, uh, this type of solution will not apply. So we will uh, look for a, a standardized solution like a DNS or even requested a port number. Uh, but just for information, this information was more for uh, in, in 3GPP. And uh, just to say that we have uh, already allocated uh, uh, two private ports uh, for two specific services defined by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by SUGPP. And just to say, so from the ITF side, this um, avoided the need for um, uh, a new port number uh, assignment request sent to IANA. Uh, uh, and so I think it's also of the issues that we had in the past. Okay. Uh, yes, dependencies. So about the publish areas. Next slide, please. So none uh, since the last uh, uh, plenary, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, next slide. So we have uh, some uh, document in the editor queue. So yeah, just as a reminder, uh, what we see here is the um, the dependencies that we have some uh, with some ITF drafts. Uh, let's say that these drafts are uh, normative references and we need to have uh, an RFC publish in order to update our specification and the complication for this aspect will be uh, um, will be noted as completed. So it's where we have a clear uh, um, uh, attack monitoring of this um, of this draft uh, because we may have other draft and I will have a, a talk about that later. So we have the one from uh, Steer on the uh, um, error handling. So 
So this one is in the Ideto queue. So we're just waiting for the uh, publication of the RFC. And after that, we will update uh, the references in our specification. Uh, we have one also on the uh, ACE for uh, the extended DTLS uh, authorized. Next, uh, next slide, please. After that, we have, so for 3GPP point of view, they are both at the same level. Editor queue or ASG review, uh, review means that uh, we are in a good shape uh, and we are confident in the fact that we might have soon an RFC. So obviously during a ASG review, you may have some uh, uh, big issues and we will need to address them. But uh, from 3GPP point of view, it means that the work done at the working group level is uh, completed. So next slide, please. Uh, yes, uh, for still we have the um, passport uh, rich call data for the rich call data. Uh, uh, so we are expecting uh, uh, soon uh, to move this uh, document to editor queue and have the uh, and having this draft uh, published as an RFC. Same for messaging. Uh, next slide, please. So it means that for for them uh, there is no issue from a 3GPP point of view. And the last one is on the, uh, it's a new one on the debt net. Uh, 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 oh, sorry. sorry. Yes, on a deterministic uh, network. Uh, so we have a, a request for extending a young model, and this is uh, now a new reference in our specification. And uh, and we are waiting also for the completion and the publication of this directly. Next slide. I would say that this one are the most critical, are most critical from a 3GPP point of view because we need to have, uh, first of all, this uh, document uh, approved uh, uh, as a working group document. Uh, so uh, two of them are there. Um, we had a long, uh, uh, so the first one on the uh, update of the uh, PVZT network, it was, uh, this draft was available for a while, uh, but it was blocked uh, uh, because uh, in the working group, uh, they, they wanted to, so in TIP4, they wanted first to complete uh, ongoing works before accepting new ones. So uh, there was a room to do that. And thanks to Brian for pushing this uh, draft forward. So it was in a working group last call a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if I changed uh, since um, I've checked, uh, but uh, the, the draft is straightforward. The comment received for this draft are straightforward also. So, uh, we're quite confident of the fact that uh, it should not be an issue to, to move it forward. And uh, we have the, the one of the quick multipass that is a, a reference in uh, some of our specification, especially in the main one for the uh, um, 5G system. So it's the technical specification 23501. Uh, 23, and uh, so far we are waiting for having uh, uh, this document uh, moving forward, and, and, and it's where we need to, to have also uh, action from the uh, interested companies uh, within 3GPP to help also ATF to move forward on this aspect. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, so for this one, uh, it's uh, there is an action point on my side. So I need to contact uh, an ITU expert because we don't have any more uh, um, uh, H248, uh, Megaco H248 experts within 3GPP. So uh, I received the contact from, uh, from uh, so for um, an expert from uh, ITU, and I will contact him and I will try to produce a draft uh, uh, just to be able to have a new um, uh, uh, code. So I, I think that with a new version of the drawing, it should be straightforward, and we will see also with. Um, ADs and the working group share how to move forward this draft when it will be available. So uh, no, no progress, I would say, but uh, at least there is a clear action point to take. Okay. Next slide. Yeah, it's, it's where I say um, uh, in the first part of the review of the uh, dependency, it was for normative, uh, normative uh, uh, references that were in our specification. And we have a normative, specific, uh, a normative reference when this uh, reference is added uh, to um, a technical specification. So the let's say that the technical specification is uh, the normative uh, uh, specification. And uh, we have another type of a uh, document called technical reports in which we have some studies about the evolution of the system and so on. 
and in which we can reference also ATF drafts. But this draft will become um, um, an ATF dependency uh, only when they will be um, uh, included in the normative specification. So it's why we have two types of uh, dependencies with ATF. But I think it's uh, relevant to highlight this one because, uh, as you can see now, for instance, for the quick multipass uh, uh, draft, uh, this one was just uh, included in the technical report uh, on, so it was a study on um, uh, ATSSS uh, in uh, 3GPP. But because the conclusion of this study said that uh, uh, it's a valuable uh, solution and it needs to be incorporated in our specification, it was included in a technical specification, and now it became um, uh, a normative reference. So I think it's why it could be also interesting for 3 guys and also ITF uh, guys uh, to check uh, this draft and when they are really interested uh, with this work, and especially when there is different uh, uh, cross uh, discussion between 3 and ITF on this uh, topic, to be, to be active on both sides, just to ensure that the work is a uh, correctly done in 3GPP, and also that the draft, the corresponding draft is moved forward uh, at the working group level first. So here you have a list of uh, documents. Uh, some of them have been al already uh, published as the RFP. Uh, so if they are included uh, in our normative spec, uh, no action will be needed because uh, the work is already completed at the ATF level. But you can see that there is also uh, uh, other draft uh, that might be for interest uh, for um, Next slide, please. And, uh, and if we could go through these next slides in just a couple minutes, because I want to make sure we give uh, John about 15 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. we yeah. uh, for, for the rest, it's, it will be for information. So please, uh, next. Uh, yeah, so here you have the release. I will not go through uh, deeply. So next slide. Next slide. Yes, this is where we are today. So um, today we we are completing the RIS uh, 18. So we are at the uh, protocol level, I would say. So all the functional aspects and so on are um, are, um, are frozen. So completed from a 3GPP point of view, and we are now working on the on the protocol aspects. So uh, it's where we need to have at the end of this period um, the work completed. Let's say almost at the same time from the IETF side. So, and so for release 18, uh, it means that we need to have something close to RFC publication. And for release 19, it's only the beginning of the, of the journey in 3GPP. We are currently, uh, uh, so next slide, please. Uh, for release 19, uh, we are currently defining only what could be the content of the release. So the, uh, the, the, the main topics that will be addressed for this uh, release. Uh, and uh, so the content will be defined uh, at the end of this year in December, and the rest. Uh, so, so for 12 months, 15 months, we will work on on the um, on the on the functional aspects, and after that, we will go through the uh, through the protocol aspects. So it means that if anything is required uh, from ATF for the release 19, it means that we need to have something available about uh, March 25, June 25, I would say. Uh, okay. So we have time, but it's something to, to, to have in mind right now because we know that the process within ATF is not like in a 3GPP. It might take uh, some time. And okay. just for information, there is no so far no discussion about uh, CD. And if there is anything, I would say, so it's just your assumption, it's something that might start for the RIS 20, so after 25, and to have something available uh, for normative aspect in uh, release 21. So it says that we have time to address this issue in 3 And, uh, and once we have the big ticket items identified for release 19, uh, we can share that uh, and have a little discussion with an IETF as to where we think they're, you know, just to highlight where the, there may be IETF working groups or work going on that's, uh, you know, related. But from from an IETF point of view, there is a new thing, and it's good, is that. Uh, in advance, people try to identify uh, what might be required from ITF uh, just to ensure that the feature will be completed on time. So it's something that we have initiated for RIS 17, uh, and we will do the same for RIS 19. So I think it's a good uh, um, progress compared to what we had uh, in the past. 
And I think we can conclude here because after that, it was just any other business and we have one. Okay, great. Um, any questions on that? Uh, otherwise, I'm going to hand it over to uh, uh, see Spencer's. Uh... Yeah, go ahead, Spencer. Uh, I just I just wanted to to thank you, uh, Lionel, for uh, including the um, the potential IETF dependencies. Uh, Thank you. Okay, John, are you uh, you're ready there? Hi, hi, Charles. Yes, I'm ready. Um, okay. Will you be pull up your slides me? and then I can pass control to you? Is that all right? Oh, oh you want right? to share? Uh, no, you can share. I, I think I've sent the slides over. So. Okay. So I just passed control to you, so you should be able to drive the slides too. Okay. You might have to accept that. I don't see any requests to accept. You don't? I. Uh, but it's okay. Take... It's only about five or six slides. So if you help me. Um, okay. I'm going to take that control then. Okay. And okay, go ahead. All right. So, well, first of all, thanks a lot for the opportunity to present this to you know folks who understand both 3GPP and the IETF side of things. Uh, so this is a draft we have in um, in TSVWG. But the problem is about uh, media handling with low latency and uh, high bandwidth for wireless networks. Um, I think it was referenced a little bit in what uh, Lionel and Charles presented on slide 28, for example. You know, there was the reference to one of the drafts in 3GPP, which has now become uh, a standards um, component in, in 23.501. But I want to caution that this is not just about uh, a 3GPP problem. It's about a wireless problem and a longer term problem that the IETF can help with. So if you go to the next slide, I'll introduce, um, well, maybe I'll skip this and go in this outline with uh, what I'm going to present. I mean, the overview, 3GPP, what 3GPP has done in release 18, and I think it was referenced in slide 28 too. Um, why I think we, what are possible options when we encounter encrypted media, which is not solved today, I think, um, in 3GPP at least. Um, and a whole bunch of solutions that we can look at and why we need to look at that in the longer term with the media that's coming up, you know, avatars and real-time media and the mix of that and how we handle latency and bandwidth and the combination of all of that. So if we go to the next slide, I'll introduce a problem in a little more detail. Yeah. So fundamentally, I think the challenge that uh, 3GPP looked at in release 18 and has now standardized uh, for RTP payload um, is how to handle media that requires a whole bunch of, I mean, a high bandwidth and also very low uh, latency in the presence of this transient variations in link capacity. And the observation and the studies that went on there also um, say that the random or tail drops affect application performance adversely. So, you know, just letting the, the wireless network just drop some stuff is not a good idea. And the decision was to go ahead and standardize in such a way that we can just drop, not just packets, but a whole media unit, like for example, a P-frame in a video, uh, maybe dropped in extreme conditions while an iframe uh, would not be, you know. Um, and that's the that, that's the real issue that's being addressed here. And a part of the solution that 3 people looked at is both L4S condition, I mean, L4S condition feedback to react, and also the selective dropping. And I think the point is that the L4S and the condition aspects were react in the order of 100 milliseconds or so, depending on 
what the round trip latency was like and the number of round trips. But the dropping decision is at or below a millisecond. Uh, if you want to really maintain that full bandwidth in the presence of very high transient link capacity variation. And I just wanted to note that this capacity change is going to be even worse for millimeter radio accesses because any obstruction or something is going to massively decrease bandwidth. And then the very next millisecond, you have a huge amount of bandwidth and so on. You know. And some of the things are what the scheduler can do, but some of the things, especially for applications like media, we need to have information that uh, can help. That's what the 3GPP, I'm going to the third bullet where the 3GPP has already specified the use of L4S and packet drops for unencrypted RTP flows. And uh, as was alluded to in the 3GPP um, you know, timeline, release 19 work is beginning. And one of the items that has not been agreed to, but is in the, um, in the list for agreement is about how to handle encrypted media flows. And uh, in combination with not just the encrypted media flows, but also avatars plus, you know, I guess AI generated content, plus, uh, you know, augmented and uh, all the other virtual reality. So all of these are coming up and we could look at it as a long-term issue. So this is very focused. It's not for the large internet, but it is for the access side. And, um, I just want to point out that this draft, we're not looking at just the 3GPP wireless network. Uh, I think it would benefit the Wi-Fi, and I hear from talking to people offline, maybe even cable networks and others. So the idea is to develop a, a common mechanism across you know, 3GPP or Wi-Fi or others, and media transports for RTP and quick, and applying to applications, not just for video delivery, but also video and AI generated content and all of that, what I mean is that there will be differences in latency requirements, how much it can tolerate delay, and the importance of whether it's dropped or not. So that's the problem statement. And if I if we go to the next slide. So just to point out what, I mean, to put it into context of what the 3GPP has been doing, uh, it's proposed uh, and now is in 23501. So essentially what we characterize as a wireless router that's going to classify and then let the wireless network do, I've sort of put it in this figure as, you know, the classifier in 3GPP terms is more or less the UPF, which takes this RTP payload and looks at the header, classifies this, separates it into different uh, media streams and so on. I mean, sorry, QoS flows. So that's what is the QFI here. I'm going into maybe too much detail here, but just to say that the shaper at that level is going to make decisions on whether to delay things or whether it can. Levels of bandwidth. But the point is again, that this, um, the part of the IETF is how to get uh, this common mechanism for encrypted media, I mean, all types of evolving encrypted media and applied to not just 3GPP, but also other accesses. So if we go to the next slide, you know, we've looked at a whole bunch of, I mean, th there are probably a whole bunch of uh, solution options that come up. And um, I guess some of the criteria that we looked at were, you know, the evolving media encoding, I mean, not just video or one way, I mean, it must maybe sensory input or, uh, you know, real and uh, generated content with different uh, delay aspects, how we handle the feedback and pack packet pacing. There may be multiple L2 wireless paths, application preferences, of course, you know, for example, you may have uh, a content provider may prefer to not drop advertisements and may want to send other content at a lower priority. And of course, there's performance and security. So if we look at various possible options, I guess starting with DSCP, it would have been ideal if we if it was possible to have, you know, many more bits and um, uh, maybe an extension header that would be able to convey things like on a on a on a group of packets. But DSCP only is able to extend it to flows, 
And uh, what we're looking at it as for a group of packets and not just a priority in terms of, um, you know, higher or lower, but also delay constraints and perhaps loss constraints. Uh, and that's what will help the wireless network. Um, a second, so I, I think DSCP is going to be very hard to change. It's, it's fundamental and I don't think it's practically changed, but it would have been ideal. The, the second option is using a media header uh extension i mean for example a like udp header extensions um uh, we, uh, that's what was referred to in slide 28 that uh, leonel and charles presented as well um so you know and you could send it inbound or tunneled and if the application can give some of those information then the wireless router can classify and do all the things that it is doing currently with uh, unencrypted rtp Another option would be also to use mask in a similar way, except that with mask, I think one of the considerations that doesn't work out so well is performance because every packet would have to be, every packet or at least a few packets or a large number of packets would have to be decrypted at the wireless router for examination and classification. And it may just defeat the whole thing, but it's a similar mechanism. A third mechanism would be to look at congestion control segments. And I think this is complementary to any other method. I mean, we could place a media relay at the mobile edge. And I guess we'd have to come up with even more um, optimal congestion control for the mobile segments. I see this as a potential longer term solution and complementary with the media header because, you know, the media header again is looking at sub millisecond kind of optimizations or in the order of milliseconds and uh, the congestion control mechanisms are looking in the order of hundreds of milliseconds others that have come up you know in offline discussions and in 3gpp um, is one is to use a media over quick relay but i think this will end up with complex key distributions i mean should 3gpp or wireless providers or wi-fi providers have to get the key and uh, keys for um, all of all the media level handling and also it would not work for RTP per se because it's media were quick. Um, a solution that came up in 3GPP was to use GTPU and terminate it at the media server but I think the discussion was essentially that media servers will not likely write to a socket for GTP2 and uh, give all those details and uh, this last uh, one on sharing keys also has come up off and on that you know maybe the application provider can give the keys to the wireless network provider but that as a whole is not so practical either because it breaks breaks end-to-end -end security um i think magnus was asking for a comment i think <laughs> to, add, to add a few things here uh i mean they are around this key sharing instead of having actually trustworthiness of this information is also a factor and that's why actually establishing security keys between the server and the and the UPS is going to process and use this information at least the first step or the mobile network in in, in large i guess is is, is a factor and, and there are actually two things right okay i i completely agree i think magnus um, completely agree with that. Trust is essential, um, you know, and um, and that's why I think that always. I mean, I mean, trust and security versus performance is a is a never an easy combination. And so, you know, we we, we can look at. I think there may be shorter term, longer term, or different options that we have to look at. And I think that's the discussion we probably need to have. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is. In our opinion, uh, the landscape of the set of solutions, um, yeah, I, I, I think the issue with the UDP header extension, if we don't encrypt it, would be that it would have to be secured in some way. If we use, if we encrypt it, then you know we'd have to pay a performance penalty, um, as, as it stands currently. Because we we did look at, um, I mean, some of the authors, you know, we looked at. What it would take to decrypt and all of that at the router and it would be basically offloaded and handled and seems to be a pretty challenging but yeah we'd have to then think of trust domains and all of that yeah that's something we should be discussing completely agree if we go to the next page um 
And just to let you know, we're, we're pretty much out of time. Oh, so yeah. So yeah, stuff. I can even skip this because this is just one solution. I think the key point was in the previous page. So if we go to the next page, I'll just summarize. And uh, you know, this is just one solution. Uh, what we'd like to see is, uh, you know, I mean, I've outlined the problem and what 3GPP has done and that, you know, fully encrypted media needs additional mechanisms. So, and that 3GPP is gonna look at it, but, you know, we want a broader solution across uh, various accesses and media transport and applications, I guess. So, you know, how do we move forward, you know, come up with um, solutions that can help the community at large? Thank you. Great, and uh, Corey, do you have a point? I'm going to say thanks, and in saying thanks, um, I see that there is a side meeting on something related to um, metadata and signaling for transport uh, at the IETF, and also we will put space in TSVWG's agenda to talk about this specific draft. So this is something that I, in the IETF group, we would love to see progress on quickly, like people would have to say if they want to do this work so we can get started, because I can see it might take time to settle on one particular outcome. Yeah, I so my head said that before, but yes, I am. I've been in, in some discussion with the authors of from ETA about the sad CDN proposal. And, and um, we're I mean, that is, is, is another view of this and saying in relation to the how to encrypt or how to has, establish a secure channel between this endpoint and the network. And I think that's a crucial part here, which we hadn't had when we discussed before and dealing with the kind of plus and spud and those kind of proposal, which has been kind of the main failing is that unless you're speaking directly Bloody headset. Uh, you 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 run into these certain issues here, so I think it's an important aspect that we need to, from an ITF perspective, have a generalized technology for this, uh, at least reaching certain certain applications and use cases goals. It's 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 going to take some time to agree on what's what's the actual relevant aspects of it, etc., and how to make it performant enough to do it in in uh, in the. Uh, at close to line rate, I was saying at line rate. Yeah, I mean, what I was meaning, Magnus, really was, mm -hmm. I think this is, this is the start of a great discussion and something that is architecturally important to do. So yeah. let's see if we can do it. Is the uh, TSVWG meeting before or after the side meeting? I'm not sure. Actually, I think Gauri has followed that, but I will track it. Yes. Yeah, OK. okay. Yeah, the answer is both. TSVWG is before it and after it. So we can oh. <laughs> we can okay. uh, we can carve out a little bit of time afterwards to follow up on uh, what we do with our next steps. Maybe I'll try and do that in the agenda. OK. Great. And uh, uh, speaking of next steps, I think what I'm going to do is, is jump back to, to close this and uh, and just to say, for we have a time at during the lunch break on Monday for um, uh, IETF BGPP coordination. And um, these slides uh, that we talked about uh, today, both the ones Lionel presented and then this presentation from John, I'll make sure are uploaded in the, the meeting materials for that. But, uh, but the plan is not to uh, really discuss those. It, it's rather to talk about some of the the things we, we identified on this call, like uh, uh, handling of liaisons and the tooling and uh, uh, what was the other thing? Um, uh, oh, and, and then uh, communication back into 3GPP, kind of to, to talk about action items there among uh, a group of folks who uh, might be able to, to help move those discussions forward. So. Um, I'll be putting, uh, Lionel and I uh, will put together an agenda and work with Peter on that as well. And if you have any other topics that you, uh, uh, that you want to add to that, just, just raise them. Uh, there'll be an invite out. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do it, probably to the same mailer um, that this meeting invite was sent out to. 
I think we're still trying to figure out how many people are really involved in this. This ha having only 12 people here makes me think it'll be a pretty manageable group. Um, but we'll pull in more more people from the IESG who will you know just be there, and uh, and from the IAB too who will want to join in. So that's kind of the rough plan for Monday. Um, any thoughts or, or questions about that? Okay. Uh, great. Well, thanks everyone uh, for joining and uh, look forward to seeing you, those of you who are able to make it in person uh, in San Francisco and the rest of you, uh, we'll make sure that remote participation is possible for that coordination uh, call on Monday as well. Thank you everyone and sorry for the beginning. Yep, thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.